Countries that show resilience in transforming their economies and their societies cannot wait for favorable winds. Often, they generate their own winds to sail through, sometimes stormy weather, in order to change the course of their economic and social history. It can take generations to achieve structural transformation. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, ECA, co-mission, is to support Africa's structural economic transformation. This is required with a view to ensuring that growth rates on the continent reach at least 7% GDP uh, annual growth per year to ensure that incomes double and broad-based development is achieved. The United Nations Economic Commission for Africa has served its member states since 1958. It is part of the United Nations Secretariat and one of five regional commissions established by the UN to assist in promoting cooperation for economic development in five continents. We help our member states, regional economic communities and other intergovernmental organizations operating in Eastern Africa to implement or to accelerate the implementation of sub-regional initiatives in specific areas of interest to them, such as infrastructure development, tourism, natural resources management. The sub-regional office for Eastern Africa covers Burundi, Comoros, Djibouti, DR Congo, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Madagascar, Rwanda, Seychelles, Somalia, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. The SROEA also serves two regional economic communities and three intergovernmental organizations. The sub regional office for Eastern Africa brings together stakeholders to discuss issues within major sectors such as macroeconomic policies, tourism, management of mineral resources, energy access and security, just to mention a few. Through this forum, experts discuss challenges pertaining to the economic and social development of the Serb region and make appropriate recommendations to address them. Our office organizes annual meetings with its key stakeholders, the member states, regional economic communities, civil society organizations and other uh, stakeholders to discuss statutory issues pertaining to the functioning of the office as well as topical issues relevant to the development of the sub-region. In 2014, we were in Kinshasa to discuss a very important topic, which is the nexus between foreign direct investment, national champions, and structural transformation. Essentially, this was a conversation about how to optimize investments and foreign direct investments with a view to creating domestic lead firms that can support job creation and development in the region. In 2015, we are discussing the blue economy in Madagascar, a very important topic for our sub-region, not only for island states and coastal states, but also for the hinterland, because these are interconnected economies. At this time when economies are struggling uh, uh, due to the you know, the global situation. Uh, for me, the Economic Commission for Africa is uh, the main point, the, pivot, the pivotal point uh, through which uh, we can come together and discuss the challenges that we face as a continent. Well, one of the high routes to achieving greater competitiveness is through pursuing further the regional integration agenda. Now, a lot's already been done in that sense. Uh, look, for example, at the East African community, uh, which is already well on the right way to establishing a common market and has ambitious plans to move towards monetary union. The ESC, uh, taken together, offers us a market of 150 million. So it's a matter of a market, but also capital. We, have, uh, we, can, we can really leverage investment from other ESC countries or Rwandans invest in other ESC countries and the matter of skills as well. It is, it is a strong building block that we have here as the ESC 
let's even move faster so that we are really a block that has cohesion, has exactly the same regulations, uh, when, where workers can move freely, and it will put us in a much stronger position. ECA has undergone a reform process with a view to reposition it as the premier think tank organization on the continent on African development issues. And I will even say globally. The ECA's mantra is Africa first. This means putting the interest of this continent first in all we do. Well, the region's uh, been performing extremely well over the last decade and a half, um, especially when compared to the 1980s and 90s. Um, but one pending challenge is still this issue of industrialization and manufacturing. If you look at manufacturing as a share of GDP across the East African region, for example, you will see that in a number of countries it's stagnated. It hasn't increased at all during this period of fast growth. Now, for ECA, one of the main uh, challenges uh, where we have to help develop policy ideas uh, so, so good policies can be implemented in this field is, is ways of accelerating industrialization and manufacturing. And in that sense, our forthcoming economic report on Africa is focused on the issue of industrialization and trade. How trade can be leveraged better to increase the prospects for stronger industrialization and a, and a better manufacturing base. Part of our mandate as UNECA is to promote inter-regional trade and we do this by carrying out analytical research and then based on this research we advise policy makers on the optimal policy mix on how you can reduce trade barriers in Africa. One particularly important development last year was the signing of the tripartite agreement uh, between SADAC, COMESA and the EAC. Together these three regional blocks constitute a market of approximately 1.2 trillion US dollars and it represents a significant opportunity for strengthening the industrialization across, across Africa. And also a very important stepping stone uh, towards the achievement of a continental-wide free trade area. The Commission argues that while growth is occurring in Africa, it is not inclusive and the pace of transformation has been too slow. Structural transformation is a key driver of economic and social development. Historically, all countries that have managed to significantly improve living standards of their populations have undergone a profound changes in economic and social structures. Uh, China and Vietnam are recent examples. The sub-regional office plays the role of strengthening the capacity of member states to formulate evidence-based plans and policies through the production of periodic country profiles and risk analysis that inform policy and decision making. As you know, there are other country profiles that other organizations produce. Ours is going to be a unique product, one that combines sound statistics, policy analysis about structural transformation opportunities in the countries that we cover, but equally a sound methodological analysis, forecasting, risk analysis that can help member states investors and other interested parties to understand what these countries that we're covering are all about. What are the opportunities? What are the risks? How are they performing in terms of the key social economic indicators? The country profiles will enable us to generate and disseminate country-specific policy analysis and recommendations on economic transformation in Africa. In particular, the country profiles will provide an African perspective on the continent's social and economic developments. Uh, we will focus on two key issues, regional integration and economic transformation. And by tracking these two areas, we aim to contribute to better informed policy analysis and decisions. Regional integration processes has been proven uh, to, to help small island developing states to overcome uh, these vulnerabilities. That's why we are fully committed into um, Pan-African uh, regional integration uh, programs. 
such as uh, the sub-regional uh, coordination mechanism. In order to ensure coherence and consistency between among stakeholders and between all these uh, sub-regional initiatives, a special mechanism has been put in place, which we call the sub-regional coordination mechanism. The sub regional coordination mechanism presents an opportunity to discuss modalities for joint implementation of the flagship projects for Eastern and Southern Africa. And we must all uh, work together to ensure that uh, the dignity that we have enables us to achieve the greatest you know, impact in terms of outcomes. So it's important that we have that sub regional mechanism. To ensure the sub regional mechanisms work, uh, I mean, there, there has to be commitment from not only the, uh, the UN agencies, there has to be commitment from the RECs, there has to be commitment from the AU, and not just um, general level commitment. I, I think it has to come from the top. As part of, uh, you know, strengthening the, the sub-regional um, uh, coordination mechanism uh, with a view to uh, sparing uh, regional uh, integration, uh, it is critical for, you know, RECs to work very closely, uh, not only with themselves, uh, but also with the member states, uh, with the private sector. And that will spare uh, regional integration across the continent. UNECA's commitment to advise governments to discover their path to development in each moment of their transformation has been praised across the continent. We have six flagship initiatives on tourism, on sustainable energy for all, on intelligent transport systems, on national resources, uh, on the management of natural resources, on agriculture value chains, and on food security in general. So this is a very good starting point. I think we need more of that, bringing people together, identifying those, what are the key priorities? Identifying areas of commonality and then creating the necessary lean structures to facilitate joint in intervention. What we have initiated uh, in UNECA in partnership with the East African community is to, to work on uh, a regional energy security policy framework. Member states in Eastern Africa have already recognized that whichever scenario that they are taking uh, off-grid renewable energy technologies would have to be part of the solution. Uh, the result, some have already set uh, clear targets. For example, in Madagascar, they would like to see 75% of their energy por portfolio to come from uh, renewable energy sources by 2020. The rapid and substantive changes in the regional and global landscape present a new reality for the Economic Commission for Africa. In September this year, the General Assembly of the United Nations will adopt the Sustained Development Goals, which will replace the Millennium Development Goals. This is very important. Africa has a common position on Sustained Development Goals. It's a position that calls for inclusive economic transformation. It's a position that calls for equitable growth, where all Africans will feel the benefits of accelerated growth, will achieve better service, access to services, and will realize its aspirations for development. We at ECA put always Africa first. So we will continue our efforts to enable the and strengthen the capacity of our member states to do informed policy analysis understand the opportunities that the, the, the continent and the, the world at large offer, and then chart pathways and strategies to harness those opportunities. Being a developmental state is to be strategic. Every country has to discover its path to development by identifying the most valuable asset in each moment of its transformation. 